Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this week's video we're going to be taking a look at how we can create a VSCO inspired effect. Now this is based upon the VSCO SP07 effect and as you can see it really crushes the blacks, desaturates most of the colors especially focusing in the greens and reducing yellows in those colors and really giving it a dull and fat look but really does work quite well, especially where you have foliage or skin tones. So I'm gonna take you step by step through the entire process. As always, there's a preset available for this particular effect. Details in the description below. So let's go through and get started. So this is our starting image, and as you can see, it's the, pretty much the polar opposite to what we're trying to achieve with the effect we're going to apply. We've got a lot of saturation in there, we've got strong contrast, and we've got good yellow warm tones to the greens. So I'm going to take you step by step through in the develop module in Lightroom and show you how we can achieve this result. Like I say, there's a preset available, but it's always good to get an understanding of exactly what's going on so you can tweak every image you apply it to to get the most from your image. So starting off in the develop module, if we come over to the right hand side, we'll expand the basics panel out and we're going to do a couple of tweaks inside this panel. Now there's not a lot of control you need to do inside this part. Most of it can be done inside the color and the tone curve. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the contrast in this to start off with and we're going to push that right the way down to really sort of strip out a lot of that contrast that's in this image. So I'm going to go pretty strong on this down to about minus 50, minus 55, somewhere around that kind of point. That's looking pretty good. We're going to take our highlights and we're going to drop those right the way down. Now you can see that brings back some of the detail in the hands, but also desaturates the highlights, you know, reduces the intensity of the highlights. We're going to take that down to about minus 80. Next up, we're going to take our shadows. We're just going to push those up a little bit so we can open the shadows up. Not going to go too far with those, but plus five is more than enough on this image. And with the whites, we're going to do the same as we did with the highlights. We're going to drop those down probably to about minus 15, somewhere in that region. And finally, we're going to grab the blacks and we're going to drop those down as well. Take those down to about minus 20, 25, somewhere around that point. So there we go. That's the first part of it. Next, we're going to move on to dealing with the amount of color and the clarity that's in the image. So I want to soften things down a little bit. So instead of increasing the clarity and getting more contrast between the different tonal edges, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to drop this down to about minus 10. That's going to soften the, the sort of the tonal information in this image, the sort of contrasted areas. I'm going to drop those down quite nicely. Next up, we're going to take the vibrance. And because this image is primarily greens and yellows and skin tones, the warmer kind of colors that are in this image, we're going to drag the vibrance down. I'm going to take that quite a way down, about minus 25, 30, somewhere around that point. And you can see that now starts to desaturate those colors in the image. Finally, we're going to drop the saturation down, but just a little smidgen because, like I say, in this particular image, we're finding the skin tones and the greens and the yellows, they're being affected more by the vibrance. So let's just drag the saturation down, probably take that to about, about minus 5, minus 10, somewhere in that region. That's looking pretty good. I kind of like that. So there we are. We've now stripped a lot of that color back. We've flattened the image down as much as we kind of want to do in this panel. Next up, we're going to jump onto the tone curve, and that's going to give us more control now over the actual tonal information in the image as opposed to the color information. So with the tone curve panel open, we're going to make a pretty simple adjustment. We're going to add a couple of extra points in like we usually do, add three extra points in. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring those whites and we're going to crush those down a little bit. So we're going to grab the top right hand corner, bring that down and you'll see when we do that, we start to flatten out the white, the highlights in the image. They start to get a little duller, a little flatter. Next up, we're going to come down to the shadow information and we're going to take that and we're going to drag that up so we can crush those blacks. I don't want that strong contrast in there. Let's actually open these up and give us a bit more of that flattening effect. So there we go. I kind of like that. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little boost in this sort of mid-tone area. But let's take a look at before and take a look at after. So you can see this now starts to give it that retro, flatter kind of look where the blacks and the highlights have all been crushed down to give less of a contrast across the overall image. So that's pretty good. We're done with the tone curve. So the next thing we want to do now is start to affect the colors in this specific image. 
Now to do that, we're just going to simply jump into the HSL slider for the hue, saturation and luminance. And we're going to leave the hue. I don't want to change any colors in this, but I want to desaturate the amount of red in the image. And that's going to primarily affect the hands, the skin tones that we have there. So we're going to grab the, the saturation of the reds. So we're going to drop that down probably about minus 45, minus 50, somewhere in that kind of region. You can see that now helps us strip out any warmer color that we have in the skin tones. So that reduces that down. But then we're going to come to the luminance and we're going to boost the red ever so slightly. Now push that up probably about plus 25, plus 30, somewhere in that kind of kind of range. And we're going to do the same with the orange, but nowhere near as much. We're going to boost that up by about plus 10. And again, let's take a look at before and take a look at after. You can see most of the effect is picked up in the shadow areas around the, the cones and things of the pine in the hands. Let's take a look again. There's before, you can see the edges, the darker areas. Open that up and that reduces the amount of sort of reds and oranges that are applied inside those areas. And finally, just to wrap up this effect, we're going to apply just a little bit of split toning. So let's open that panel up and we're now going to go through and adjust this. Now we're not going to affect the highlights in this particular example, we're only going to work with the shadows. And what I want to do is just add in a little bit of purple magenta kind of tone in there. So I'm going to drag that up to this kind of area. You can see that we're sort of working inside the sort of blue and purple kind of tones. And we're going to bump the saturation a little bit. Not going to go too far with this. We just want to bring that little bit of hint of sort of purpley blues into the shadows to cool the overall image down. Let's give it a saturation of about, let's go for about plus 15, plus 12, plus 15, somewhere around this. Let's take a look at before and take a look at after. And you can see what that does is it reduces the amount of warmth in the shadow. So the hands start to cool down. The shadow area in the background takes over an overall cooler tone and really does give, give a quite nice effect. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Obviously, if you wanted to go in and make some further adjustments, you could do that. You could add some grain into it. You could put a vignette in there. You can do whatever you kind of want. But I think this is a great starting point for creating that VSEO style effect. Well, as always, like I say, details for the preset are in the description below. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, or you've got a particular type of effect you'd like to see us take a look at covering, pop those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that subscribe to be kept up to date with all of the new content and offers we have on the channel. Well, until next time, take care.